the government must be held to account for missed targets. We cannot continue to pay lip service to the most pressing issues of our time. In the summer of 2018, the world sat up and took notice of a young Swedish activist who began the hugely popular school strike for climate. From the strike came the Fridays for Future movement, which pre-COVID was a mass movement of over 100,000 school children going on strikes in more than 100 countries around the world. Greta Thun Thunberg and her peers around the world put climate action firmly back on the political agenda. I say back on the political agenda because climate action has already been on international agendas for some time now. There have been countless global conferences and historic agreements, endless reports, climate change denial and realisation that developing countries are suffering the impacts most whilst having contributed the least to climate change. I think that part of the disconnect from the urgency of climate change is how the problems are portrayed. We are not speaking in layperson's terms. We speak, to, we speak about tonnes of carbon dioxide or CO2 equivalent, carbon dioxide equivalent, emissions trading schemes, ETS, GHGs, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. There are scientists, academics and researchers thankfully educating us about the percentages of carbon emissions reductions, sinks, biomethane emissions from livestock, gases and targets. And remember in the 80s and 90s when we were worried about the hole in the ozone layer, scientists had discovered that CFCs were causing this hole. People were told that aerosols contained CFCs and there was a concerted effort across industry, manufacturers, consumers and consumers to eliminate and or drastically re reduce the use of CFCs in aerosols and other products that up to then had been emitting them at large rates. Over the last number of years, climate action has seemed like an upper and middle class issue. Those who could and can afford to buy electric cars bought them, retrofit their homes, shop organic and from ethically sourced suppliers. There is no fast fashion for those who cannot afford it otherwise. There has been a kind of snobbery around the individual responsibility for addressing climate action. The reality is that some aspects of climate action are not accessible for cohorts of our society and people are doing their best within the systems that have been created around them. And we need to look at that, and that's why a just transition is so important as well. Why talk so consistently about personal responsibility, but then allow Google to move 75 billion in profits through the supposedly defunct double Irish loophole? It doesn't make any sense, and people see that. The bill before us today is a vast improvement on what was initially introduced. And I would like to commend the members of the Joint Committee on the Climate Action for the thorough pre-legislative scrutiny they undertook. It is welcome to see that many of the committee's 78 recommendations were accepted and there are still, still some remaining issues with the bill, which I hope will be addressed at committee stage, because it is imperative that we have tangible and clear targets in place. The government must be held to account for missed targets. We cannot continue to pay lip service to the most pressing issues of our time. I would also like to commend the activists and grassroots organisers who have been working tirelessly to scrutinise this bill and offer solutions to all the members of the House. In 2018, we made history in this House by passing the, Fa the Fossil Fuel Divestment Act. The Act amended the National Treasury Management Agency 2014 and instructed the agency to divest the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund of its assets and fossil fuel companies. This divestment is to take place within five years of the commencement of the Act and to precipitate a timely decarbonisation process in line with Ireland's cl climate change commitments under Article 2 of the Paris Agreement. It was a great day and we were lauded internationally for, for our work. We know that Ireland is so small that we don't make a huge difference globally but we can and should be a leader in the fight against climate change. And that act made a difference globally, and it, was, and it sent out a message right across the world that it, it is possible to divest and that everybody can do it, and even if a state sets out to do it, Thank it can be done.